Now we will go to our winner, which I was told this morning was not a surprise because it went out yesterday to everyone, right? Yes. So, <laughs> Dr. Wetterburn. Now, you have been here since, I have another sheet. You want me to leave that out? <laughs> However, you're certified in surgery, surgical critical care by the American Board of Surgery. You're in your medical degree from Cornell. And I remember we had this conversation because I wondered if I was working there then. Because <laughs> that was my first job in New York City. But then you completed your internship and your surgical residence at St. Luke's Roosevelt Hospital Center. And yes, I'm going to say it like that. Because that's what it was. And then you completed your fellowship in surgical critical care at the University of Miami. I bet you that was a lot there. Jackson Memorial Hospital. And then you came back here as an attending since 1993. So you are definitely a positive fixture here. Now, what have you been up to since 1993? You've restored the lives of so many trauma patients, but he has stayed human and approachable. One patient mentioned that she felt so dejected after her accident. But Dr. Weber went to talk to her and held her hands, and that helped her to have the courage to go on. He is always teaching residents, nurses, and he always explains the why. So Lucy, wherever you are, he explains the why. Not just the how and the what. And that came from Susan and Marcia, the nurse manager of the trauma unit. Dr. Ray, as he is finally, fondly called, is a doctor's doctor. Compassionate, smart, humble, thorough. When everyone's hope is gone on a patient's recovery, Ray perseveres. Ray cares not only for his patients, but also the nurses he works with. He treats every nurse with respect. Ray treats his ICU nurses like his own family. And that is from Myla Jones, who you know has since retired. Dr. Wedderburn is truly an inspiring person to work with. He's an extremely compassionate, dedicated guy, is what I was going to say. He's very much a nursing advocate. He believes in the power of nursing to heal and trust the judgment of the nurses that he works with and will always listen to their concerns. He supports numerous nursing initiatives, including the ED Trauma Nurse Program, and any educational efforts or ideas that will improve patient care. I've been a nurse for 40 years and can honestly say that Dr. Wetterburn is a very special, exceptional human being. His dedication is truly a gift to all of us. And that is from Deb Travis, your trauma coordinator in the RN. I came to know him in the late 80s when he started here as an intern, resident, chief resident. My first impression was that he was full of energy and you still are, smart and you still are, and intelligent. Mm, I love that one. He has a big presence about him, made a huge impact in the evolution of a trauma program. Huge. Throughout the years, he has always remained the same person. He is exceptional. That's from June Barton. Working with Dr. Wedderburn is truly an honor and a blessing. He treats everyone as if it were his own family. It is a rare quality to have these days. Things that you pick up. So, on that note, we would like to present you with the Physician of the Year Award for the attendance category. Good afternoon. Since, Good afternoon. I'm, since I'm an old fart, I have a lot more to say, and, um, and it's hard for me to remember things, so I have to write them down. Uh, I'm humbled and honored to be the recipient of this inaugural award in this, the year of the nurse. So the WHO declared 2020 the International Year of the Nurse and Midwives in honor of the 200th anniversary of the birth of Florence Nightingale, who was born on May 12, 1820. She's the founder of Modern Nurse. Nurses make up the majority of the worldwide healthcare force and in the developing world, are frequently the primary care providers. As a frontline provider spending the most time at the bedside, the, roles of, the role of nurses are often undervalued 
and underappreciated. Of course, uh, when this decision was made, COVID-19 had not been anticipated, but the pandemic uh, has certainly um, pointed out to us the role nurses play um, in day-to-day -day activity, and certainly this pandemic accentuated some of that. Sort of a once-in-a-lifetime challenge for us. Um, COVID-19 required collaboration at all levels. And although everyone, we all rolled up our sleeves and toiled side by side to care for patients afflicted by a disease, which we did not fully understand, putting ourselves at risk. I'm particularly proud of the work done by our nurses, truly awed by their heroism, the donning and doffing, making the sacrifice, caring for patients with this deadly disease about which we knew so little. Our ICU nurses and the emergency department nurses had a particularly difficult role, seeing only the most severely ill with the attendant high mortality. I was a bit surprised uh, when I was told that I, um, I was receiving this award um, for many reasons, but, uh, but two of them I'll share with you. Certainly, as you can see from the list of nominees, there are many other physicians who I would say are at least equally deserving. Second piece is um, I'm incredibly demanding of the nurses and uh, they know it. <laughs> they know that my expectations are high and I'm not the most patient person when I believe someone is not putting forth their best effort to get the job done. As well as that, I've, 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 um, I have a lot of nicknames. One of them is um, Dr. I and O. So uh, <laughs> there was a Jamaican nurse in Ten East um, and when I would walk on the floor, first coming, oh no, here comes Dr. I and O. You better make sure your eyes and nose are done. Well, you know, the eyes and nose are the lifeblood of the surgical patient. I can't take care of my patient without knowing the eyes and nose. So it's, um, it's absolutely essential. And I was honored to have that name. Uh, and I believe they accept my demanding nature because they know I'm all in with them. I'm a firm believer in collaborative practice and understand that it is impossible to achieve a success successful outcome without smart, caring professional nurses. I would also be remiss if I fail to acknowledge that I'm influenced by the many nurses in my family. My mom and my sister, retired nurses. My favorite cousin in Canada is a nurse. And I had a cousin who worked on the mercy ships for many, many years and who now runs an orphanage in West Africa. I wanna spend a few minutes telling my story, particularly for anyone within earshot who feels marginalized or shut out of the system. For the parents with black or brown children who worry that they cannot make it because the system is so stacked against them. Clearly, as a nation, we need to do a lot more work to dismantle the system of structural racism that exists, which is easier said than done. We also need to reckon with the gross inequality that exists in our system, which renders black and brown lives as less valuable. There's something of a reckoning going on in our nation, and this needs to continue. But in the, me in the meantime, we still have to push forward. When I think back on my own trajectory, I can't help but remember that so, so much of what occurs in any individual's life is a result of the accident of birth. Where you're born, who your parents are, the environment you're forced to live in, the presence of war or famine, to some degree, luck, mentorship. These are things that many people take for granted. I was born in Kingston, Jamaica, to working class parents, school teacher, and a prison warden. I had what I considered an idyllic childhood. In a lot of respects, you know, life is pretty simple. If you have food on the table, a roof over your head, um, parents will love you. I decided I wanted to be a doctor. My parents encouraged me. Growing up in a majority black country, it never crossed my mind that there was a position in society that was unattainable. I know, now know that that was naive, but you know, children need to be able to dream. We immigrated to the US when I was 15, and uh, simply put, I was clueless. I mean, I had no idea. We knew nothing about the system. Going through high school, there were a couple of people who made a big difference in my life. Uh, again, we didn't know the system, and just having a school teacher um, who encouraged me to get into the right classes, to be prepared to be, to be pre-med, and a guidance counselor who encouraged me to apply to particular schools. She told me to apply to Brown University. I had no idea what I was. I think my dad still think, thought I went to Brown Univers Brown's University. 
Uh, so, you know, that's how impressed he was with that. Um, I mean, financial aid and scholarships for college and medical school were an important part of me getting through the process. And I'm mean, just, I'm telling the story, particularly for those who are listening, because I think that there are a lot of people out there who, um, who feel that some of these things are unattainable. And I just want, want you to understand that certainly for me, um, this wasn't a gimme. There was nothing automatic about this. And um, without mentorship, a bit of luck, working hard, taking advantage of the opportunities, I wouldn't be standing here today. I still occasionally talk to students who are being discouraged from pursuing certain careers, or if they decide to go into medicine, being discouraged from pursuing certain specialties. Kids were told, why not be, you know, some other allied health field as opposed to being a physician? I mean, it's okay. I mean, there's nothing, I mean, all the fields are important, but I think we need to encourage um, achievement. If someone wants to be a physician, we should do everything we can to, to encourage them. Similarly, within the field of medicine, uh, a lot of students are, are still told to pursue careers in, 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 in primary care. There's nothing wrong with that, if that's what you want to do. But clearly there's a need across the board. Um, and there's no reason you shouldn't go into surgery simply because um, there's, more, there's, a, there's a great need for primary care in, um, in our communities. We need people in all fields. And, um, and I would encourage those um, who are so interested to pursue careers in surgery, um, which again is for me over the past almost 30 years has been an absolute joy. I must say that I'm proud of what I've achieved in medicine, but I'm well aware of the fact that there are those that sacrificed and paved the way for me to have this opportunity. My passion is caring for patients, teaching, and, to give, and for giving back. And to that end, I participated in multiple medical missions and hope that once uh, COVID-19 calms down, we will be able to resume doing that to, um, to help provide care to patients in other parts of the world where they simply just have no resources. Let me close by again thanking all the nurses for honoring me with, with the inaugural Physician of the Year Award. Some of you have known and worked with for over 30 years. And I look forward to ongoing collaboration to provide the best care for a patient.